Check, check. Yeah, it is so bright. You mean, are you okay with all no, this bright light bright. on you? Yeah, it's very bright. You got light. A light is more bright, sir. Lights are too bright here to to talk here. Too too, too many. The reason why lights are too bright here for on the podium make it a little less. Okay. And and let's let's keep the light on in the audience. Yeah, let's keep the audience light on. I think during the lecture it will be good to have audience light on. So let's keep the audience light on right now. Okay, welcome friends. My name is uh, Harkisan Vasa. I am a president of Jain Center Senior Association. And uh, we are happy that you all are here. You're going to have a wonderful experience today. Uh, we are going to start uh, the today's program first with a very nice uh, uh, information on, on how to ha live healthy life. And, and then we are going to have also how to eat proper amount of proper type of food. So you're also going to hear about that also. And then we're going to have a couple of hours of musical program and wonderful, uh, wonderful uh, dinner also. So, so please sit back and enjoy and, uh, and learn from the, from the presentations. So, so prior to starting uh, our programs at Jain Center, uh, we always uh, start with uh, Navkar Mantra. So I'm going to recite that. And if you can just fold your hands, you can recite with me if you want. Uh, mm -hmm. Om Namo Arihantanam, Om Namo Siddhanam, Om Namo Ayariyanam, Om Namo Vajayanam, Namo Lohe Savasahonam, Eso Panchanamukkaro, Sava Pava Panasano, Mangalanancha Sava Singh, Padamam Havai Mangalam, Padamam Havai Mangalam. Very quickly, in one minute, Jain Center Senior Association uh, was started uh, over 25 years ago. And uh, we have uh, more than uh, 250 members in it. If you are not member, you can become an annual member for a family for $20 or life member for $150 if you want to. Uh, but we welcome people even without membership. Uh, and uh, even non-Jains are welcome to come to our programs. We want the programs to be enjoyed by uh, all people of all ages. So always tell your friends and uh, others that uh, program is open to all for anybody to come and enjoy the program. So please feel free to invite your friends and uh, others. Uh, and we will continue to announce uh, more and more interesting programs every time. And you will really enjoy it. So now I'll inter introduce uh, our first speaker, Dr. Jayesh Basha. Uh, he has a, a MBBS degree from India and then MD degree from USC here. Uh, he has been uh, uh, practicing for more than 40 years. And uh, he specializes in uh, practicing uh, all the internal medicine as well as ger geriatric medicine. He has a number of patients uh, who are like over, over 100 patients who are over the age of 90 years of, of age. So he really knows how to treat people of a senior age and what, what problems they have and how, how to live a better life. He believes in preventive care and preventive medicine. She will tell you all about how to prevent before anything bad happens to you, how to make sure you don't have something bad happen to you to start with. Because he doesn't believe in giving too much medication. He believes in guiding you on how to live a life properly. So please welcome and uh, with a round of applause to Dr. Jayesh Vaisha. And Dr. Jayesh Bhai Shah is well known in the community. Come on, Jayesh Bhai, keep coming. Uh, uh, he has been a president of the Jain Center for many, many years. And he has been, his whole family has been serving Jain Center for, for many, many years with his wife and uh, with his uh, sister and brother-in-law and sister in -law. All, the, all, of the, all of the relatives are all very much devoted to uh, helping Jain Center. Welcome, Dr. Jayesh Bhai. Jai Jinendra, Arkisan Bhai, thank you very much for your warm welcome and uh, introduction. Um, if you don't mind, I'll move to 
it a little bit. Just, just one thing. Uh, yeah, th th there will be question answer session also. So, and I'll come around with the mic. So, when you want to ask a question, you raise your hand. I'll bring the microphone to you, and then you will start the question. Okay. So, don't just start talking. I'll come to you with a microphone. Can you hear me well? I think uh, Dinesh Bhai, I changed everything. So now you need to change the screen a little bit, or you're okay. Dinesh Bhai, center karamate. Reason I moved this so I can see the slides also. If you cannot do it, I can go back to where I was. Test. Just we we cannot move that camera. Your slide would be there and will be turning off the lights. I got the answer. How about that? Thank you. So Jai Jinendra and good afternoon. Um, first of all, I can say that those who are very much interested in their personal health and uh, desire to live a better life, those who are here. That does not mean that those who are not here do not have that interest, but there might be so many other reasons they may not be here. And, uh, but I want to thank you all for being here. My topic today to talk about is how you can make your senior years, your golden years, real golden, or the best way you can live a good life, uh, and how you can prevent major problems uh, without getting trapped into those problems and live good life. Uh, most of the things what I'm going to talk, uh, probably they are not new. Everyone knows them very well. But what I have done is I've compiled from my 40 years of practicing medicine, I've compiled them so that I can put it together and we can just discuss about it, talk about it. And as Harkison Her Bhai said, we will have question and answer session at the end. So please hold off your questions and answers. Thank you again. Let's start with Dinesh Bhai. Now. I'm at your mercy now, huh? Thank you. So healthy aging. Aging is common thing. Nobody can prevent it. But you can do it healthy way or unhealthy way. So how to do the healthy way? That's the main thing we are going to talk about. What to expect, how to tackle if there are problems. That's what it is. Uh, second slide, please. Oh, I can do the slides from here. So now, OK, thank you. With the new science and a lot of research and uh, modern sciences, people are living longer than what we used to live before. Today, average life of um, woman is about, I'm talking about in this country, 83 year old, uh, 83, and the man, for men, it's 78, 79, which used to be 10 to 20 years lower, 50 years ago, 100 years ago. So, but this advances in the medicine and uh, with modern science, we have been uh, living longer. We have now early diagnosis as we have more tests are available, more uh, instruments available. Uh, so we have been diagnosing them earlier than used to be. Uh, and a lot of improvement in healthcare services plus medication treatment. So that's another factor which helps us to live longer life. People have more self-awareness, improved knowledge, like what you're doing, you're being more knowledgeable and living better life. And what we see, about more than, uh, than 10,000 baby boomers are turning into 65 every year. So last 10 to 20 years, the baby boomers, no, seniors population is getting larger and larger. You would not believe that what has changed over the last 30 years, as if you talk about today, approximately 1.4 million people are living in a nursing home, which was not the case 20 years ago. Longer lives, yes, we are living longer lives, but it has also led to new problems also. And the problems are not just medical problems, physical problems, cognitive problems, um, and emotional problems, social problems, and many health issues. And health issues, most common, uh, I have the list of many of them, and they are not in the chronological order, but as we know, heart problems, lung problems, uh, strokes or cognitive that 
let me make it simple, the memory issues, um, bone problems, osteoporosis or osteoarthritis, bladder problems, bladder and bowel problems, where leaking of bladder or leaking of the bowels. These are even your balance. When you walk, you may not be able to walk properly. These are the most common problems, and there are many of them I have written down here that people get strokes, unsteady gait, and frequent falls, bladder bowel incontinence. I already said that nutritional problems, dentition problems, loss of vision, loss of hearing, diabetes is one of the most common condition. Uh, in certain, like people coming from Hispanic community, native Indians, people coming from Asian, like Indian community, we have higher rate of diabetes compared to people, those who are like uh, Caucasian people. So certain conditions are more common in certain uh, ancestries or certain uh, community compared to other communities. Um, Parkinson's, dementia and forgetfulness, cancer, loneliness. So these are the other problems which we have created, like, like loneliness or social isolation, um, anxiety, depression, financial worries. These are the things we tackle, we face them, and now we need to know how we can tackle them. I may not be able to give you recommendation for each and every problem, but whatever I know, I will share with you. <laughs> so, how to tackle them, how to stay healthy, protect your health in a way, whichever you can do the best way. Eat healthy food, enough food, and like not having enough nutrition, that's another factor that we can uh, create a problem. Uh, enough food, fruits and vegetables, very important. Drink enough liquids, don't get dehydrated, avoid dehydration, get enough sleep at night, and walk regularly. Walking is living. Uh, when you stop walking, that limits your health uh, and it creates more health issues. People may say, that, oh, I, my legs are not working, I cannot walk, but there are so many other activities you can do to keep your body in good health. Um, daily exercise, yoga, and weight-bearing exercise if you cannot walk by yourself. Uh, mental exercises to keep your sanity good, reading, word puzzles, uh, playing mind-challenging games, uh, creative activities of the brain, uh, those things can help you tremendously. And have a daily dose of entertainment. Seniors are not barred from having entertainment. They are entitled to get inter entertainment and stay connected with your friends and family, very important. Now, sometimes when we say take some medication, some people may argue, uh, well, uh, Gujarati Malakish, those who cannot understand Gujarati, I can translate into English, but boss says, oh, I tablet niche padi gai. strong calcium tablet. People also are worried about losing their memory, becoming uh, like not able to remember. And lots of pharmaceutical companies are spending millions, not millions, billions of dollars to develop new drugs. But then this African pro proverb is that they say that you don't need to go through all those expensive things. Just lend some money to someone you'll remember for the rest of your life. <laughs> <laughs> So uh, moving and uh, uh, body in motion will age better than one which is in the couch. Uh, movement, activity, very important. Active mind works much better than idle mind. How many of you have developed, looks like many of you are retired. I don't say all of you, but many of you might have been retired. But retirement does not mean that you withdraw yourself from the rest of the activity. And I want to see show of hands. How many of you are involved in some activity which you enjoy where you are not sitting at home in a couch, you are doing something on a daily basis? Look at this. Almost all of you are very active, so now we don't need to talk more. We can go home, right? <laughs> okay. Um, stay strong, live healthy with positive attitude. And positive attitude is so important. I will talk about it more later on, and we have very um, a person who has experienced uh, it, he will be a good inspirational to all of us. So I'll have him come and talk to us about his personal experience. But that would be so. When we talk about um, word puzzles or like uh, mental exercises, you can have reading, writing, singing. Some people join some 
groups where they have singing groups, uh, karaoke groups, um, or playing cards, or uh, crossword puzzles, whatever interests you the most, but do something where you stay active. Some people like to play with their grandchildren who teach them so many new things, and that keeps you active too. So those are the things you need to do. And having good friends and family is so important. It has been said that one good friend works like good medicine, but a group of friends work like a pharmacy. So have a group of friends and spending time together is so helpful, so we should do that. That's very important. Okay, so we need to get good medical help. That before I go for that, let me tell you a couple of more things how we can, so it is, there are certain way you can live your routine life, and I would say that practice silence for at least few minutes before you get up out of the bed, and that's very calm, it's a calm reconciliation with your once, your own self. Uh, silence, morning, evening, you can practice it, that would be very helpful. Then second thing, attitude of gratitude. Be thankful to the whole world. You can th be thankful to Mother Earth, can be thankful to water, electricity, those are the basic things, but still, you can be thankful to your spouse, your family, your parents, your brother, sister, your spouse, uh, and your children, friends. That that helps. It brings positivity in your life, and it will show some energizing and healing effects to you. Very important. Next thing is that medical issues make the so walking is living. I say that so walking very important. At the same time, make sure you stay. Steady, do not fall. When fall starts, I would say it's the beginning of the end of the life. So be careful. And if you have to make some arrangement at your home, inside your home, having non-stick rugs or having some side bars, wherever you can do, even in bathroom, you can have those bars where you can hold off. Because I see so many falls coming out of the tub, coming out of the bathroom, walking in the house, and they miss the step. So if you have a step, you may have to take some uh, measures where you can have some sidebar where you can hold when you get down. So those things are very important. Stay hydrated. Many times we forget to drink enough liquids. Very important to stay hydrated. Same time, stay well nourished. Have good nourishment, regular meals, having vegetables and uh, fruits, very important. Avoid fast food or the heavy food which leads to other medical problems, be having too much fat in the food or fried food. So you should avoid that. And other important thing, that have your meals at least three hours before you go to bed. Don't have a dinner and then right after that you go to bed. It's not a healthy way to do it. Mentally active, having, um, as I said, the creative, be creative, use whichever way it makes you happy, whatever interests you very important to do it. It's creative as well as analytical functions of the brain should be a part of your daily activity and that would keep you very healthy. Relaxed mind and happy heart, it always the best, it preserves and provides, provides you the best health and immunity. Now, how do you do, what I see every day in my practice is get, getting medical help. First thing is that many of the people feel like I'm healthy, I don't have any problem, why do I need to go to a doctor? If you're healthy, if you don't have any problem, at least go see a doctor once a year. I'm not drumming up the business for the doctors, but I'm talking about for yourself, that many of the things you can catch early on, and I am proponent of, proponent of preventive medicine. Don't wait until it happens. And simple example, people say, what are the symptoms of diabetes? Usually diabetes in first few years, it does not give you any symptoms. Many times diabetes is diagnosed when they're going for sur surgery and doctors, the surgeon says you need to have some tests done. When they come to us for tests done, we find out that they have diabetes. You don't know how long they have diabetes. And same way, hypertension, when it's really high blood pressure, then it gives you some symptoms. But if it's mildly elevated blood pressure, does not give you any symptoms. But in long run, they affect you in bad way, that diabetes, in long run, if it's untreated diabetes for 10, 15, 20 years, it can affect your 
most of the important organs in your body, including heart, it increases risk for heart attack, increases risk for uh, stroke, increases risk for losing of your eyesight. It affects the kidneys where people go on dialysis. It affects your circulation in your legs. People lose their legs because they did not take care of it. When it's diagnosed, it's too late. So important thing is that have regular checkups. Um, and then when you are going to a regular checkup, you're not just going to say the hi to the doctor. Make sure you make the best out of your, practice, your visit with the doctor. If you are prescribed medication, you need to know what medications you are taking. You should take the control. Many times you say, oh, doctor, these are the answers I get. Oh, I am taking the same medication you gave me two years ago. Now, doctors may have thousands of patients. They may not remember what was given. And when they're going to see two, three doctors, it can happen that different doctors may have given different medication. You need to con take control of your life. Make sure you know what medication you're taking, how often you're supposed to take it. Make sure they're not missed. You take them on a regular basis. And when you go to your primary doctor, you make sure he knows what you're taking. If there is any conflict with two different doctors or three different doctors giving you medication, doctor can point it out to you. Some medication can affect adversely to your body. It can affect kidney failure. It can affect um, dry cough, which sometimes people don't know that I'm having dry cough because of my, my medication. So having, taking the control of your medication, talking to your doctors, checking with your doctors, and questioning. You don't need to be shy. You need to go with a list. You know, some people make this kind of list that it would say, I can uh, uh, rotate, I can um, uh, send it to you so you all you can say that what to ask, uh, how to get the best of uh, your visit with your doctor, and some things you need to discuss with them. If you have fallen or if you have problems with your balance, if you're walking, or if you have problems with your leaking of the urine or leaking of the bowels, or if you have difficulty sleeping, if you feel depressed or anxious or nervous, those are the things you need to present and be, don't, don't be shy of telling because those are the things, if it can be treated, it would change your life. You will be able to live a better life. So it's very important that uh, you um, discuss with your doctor. As I said, that you make sure that you're taking right medication and if there's any other issue, you need to uh, discuss with them. Uh, follow the recommendations, what you're given by your health advisor and avoid exposure to health hazards and sick people. When you see that someone has some sickness, Yes, you love them, you want to be closer to them, but you need to protect yourself also so that you don't catch those kind of infections. Um, getting vaccination is so important. Some people are shy of or do not like to take vaccination. One thing I want to tell you that most of the vaccines which are being given, they have been proved, they have been um, tested, and when government or FDA approves it, there's some value in there. So, uh, and I have seen in my practice, many people say, oh, those vaccines have some effects which they will take my information out of it or it would affect me so badly in future, I don't want to take those vaccines. The complications, there's always, as I said, there's not a single medication on this earth has no side effect. Yes, vaccines also may have some side effect, but you have to think of pros and cons, how much of it's helpful versus what kind of problems it can create. Um, and avoid, as I've already said that, avoid exposure. Now, there are some resources available uh, in the community. You may want to take advantage of those resources also. And because of the time constraint, I may not be able to go into details of the resources, but if anyone has any question or if you want to discuss, I will be available later on, we can talk. In community, government programs are so many, vast programs are available. Unfortunately, our community, because we are maybe financially doing so well or whatever, we are less exposed to those financial or other programs by government compared to other communities. Uh, but there are government programs which can help, social workers can help. There are medical helplines. If you don't have anybody else, you can dial that line and you can get some medical help. Mental health lines are there. There are some daycares where you go. If you are lonely by yourself during daytime, your children or uh, family members are working, uh, if you feel lonely, it's good to get involved with some daycare where you can socialize with your same age people and share your experiences, keep mentally healthy. Um, religious organization like ours, we have many programs, stay active. Our Kisanbhai and our senior programs, they are doing very good job, so be active in those kinds. Uh, nowadays, iPads also, and I'm sure okay, almost all of you are using uh, your laptops or iPads and stay connected with the world, that helps. Um, meal program, which our community rarely uses, but 
there are meals program meal program by the uh, governments also transportation services are all uh, are also available um, and above all being positive is very important stay positive be confident and live a good life in the sense that you can do it if other people can do it why you cannot do it um, so and we will talk about that positivity um, certain things herbs which we most of us are coming from country where natural ways um, keeping ourselves healthy using the herbs which western countries were not using in past but now it has become more common and they have known they have learned that it has some uh, positive aspect simple example i can talk about turmeric 30 years ago if you talk to anyone in this country about turmeric they would laugh at you what is that that yellow powder what is that even if they see in our food they would be laughing at it now many of the orthopedic doctors are prescribing turmeric to their patients <laughs> one of the Hollywood event, Oscar event, at the end of the event, they gave as a gift yellow ghee. That was, that was turmeric in there. You go to Starbucks, now they charge you six or seven dollars for turmeric milk. So turmeric has become so common nowadays. Uh, same way, psyllium husk, very helpful because as we age, our bowels, muscles get weaker. Our bowels are getting weaker, we get constipated, plus less activity, certain medications can affect our bowels, people get constipated. To have a good bowel habits and health, psyllium husk, and it's natural thing, there's no side effect of it. Uh, so it's good to use some psyllium husk. Ashwagandha, I'm surprised that rather than myself telling to my patients, my 90-year-old patients, 80-year-old patients, they will come and say, Dr. Shah, I started taking ashwagandha. I said, what is that, why did you? How did you hear about it? Oh, Costco is selling it so good for your immunity, your health. Uh, which 10 years or 20 years ago, if I used to tell them, they would say, what are you talking about? So uh, people have now learned more about ginger being drained. We cannot eat plain ginger, but dried ginger soon also is helpful. Basil, cinnamon, yoga. Okay, these are the natural things, but yoga and meditation is so helpful. Rather than having mental games and all those things, there was a study they did for 12 weeks program where mental exercises versus yoga and meditation. People doing yoga and meditation, they did so well. Uh, within 12 years, it showed up. So those are the things so important and helpful. Uh, so these are the things what, and as I said, probably you know all of these things. I'm just putting in a one paper and uh, talking to you. But next thing what I'm going to bring up, it's a tough talk about, difficult to talk about, but we all have to face. There are only very few things on this earth which are unavoidable, and death is one of them. So we need to be uh, prepared. One day, sooner or later, all of us will be facing this issue. Why not to talk about when we are fully capable of thinking, we are fully cognizant about, cognizant about thinking, and let the family members, either your spouse or your family member, your children, know about what is your wish, uh, your advanced health care, there is a, now a go, this government has like, a, uh, they have a post form, like each and every member when they go to their doctor, they have to fill out, not most of the doctors are asking for it, but post form is so helpful for even paramedics when they come in, it's physician's orders of life, for life sustaining treatment. If you let them know what your wishes are, it becomes very easy for everyone to help you and handle your healthcare. Even there's another like five wishes kind of thing says that um, you can, express your wishes, what your wishes are, so that when time comes, they can execute in a proper way, and they don't have to make decision for you. They will do what you want to do. It's very important to do that. Um, and um, uh, death with dignity. If you have all these things lined out, it would be helpful for everyone. One thing which is very rarely used, or we are less exposed to is tissue and do or organ donations. This is so helpful one person by donating their organ can save seven lives. So if you think of in advance and if you let your wishes know ahead of time, uh, that can be executed in a proper way. Um, uh, th there is a company, Legacy, uh, One Legacy, so they can contact and it has to be done within certain time. If you wait for the family members to tell, oh, my loved one wanted to do uh, 
organ donation, but it's six hours later or 12 hours later, it may not be helpful. So if you have expressed your wishes ahead of time, and if this company is called right on time, it can be helpful to other people. Um, and last but not least, a Jain community knows very well Santara. This is by your own wish. You want to take Santara and you want to end your life. But there are other ways like aid, of, aid in dying or euthanasia. Euthanasia is not like only one or two states in this country, they are allowing euthanasia. But aid in dying is also another way that when a person is suffering, does not want to suffer any longer, does not want to prolong their suffering, and they want doctors can, in, even in California, it's allowed that they can help you dying with dignity without suffering. So with all these things, what my point is that if you be cognizant about your illness and be positive about your thinking, definitely you can do better than average person. There was a survey, survey of the seniors that they, they were asked that what bothers them the most. And I want to hear what you people think. I uh, want to hear uh, what do you think, what might be the most common uh, concerns seniors would have. Anyone wants to share your personal thoughts? Good, that's one. From, Loneliness, very good. Sickness, illness, yes. Yes. Only men. <laughs> but you're right. So I would put it in a way, incontinence of the urine, losing control of the urine or going to bathroom. It's not only men. Women have the same problem uh, because they have their own way. But definitely as we get older, we have losing control of the bladder and bowel, and I call it, it's a going problem is a growing problem. <laughs> Anyone else wants to share? Good, good. Yes. Anyone else? So financial, yes. financial worries, right? That's what you meant. Dinesh I bhai, can I share? Uh, yeah, please, Dinesh bhai. This is a unique problem that I think, I think our children's immediate son, daughters, are so dependent on us. And sometimes I'm wondering what would they do if I'm not around? Good good point. Uh, you brought up good point, Manjri Ben. But at the same time, the other way is also that we become so dependent when we become independent. Like when you're independent, you're driving by yourself, you're uh, cooking or you're preparing your meals by yourself, fine. But the time comes when you cannot do all those, I call it ADLs, every daily life activities. When you cannot do activities of daily life, you become dependent on your, either your children, if not children are not around, you de become dependent on others, so that's also a problem. But you are right, I agree with you. Manjri Ben? Good point. Excellent, excellent. So upbringing, how you do it. Looks like you know all those things, so now I can stop talking and I can sit down and we can look at this. What the common problems you already mentioned, all of them. Loss of independence, personal medical health, what Yogesh Bhai said, financial hardship, what uh, uh, by Harkison Bhai said, moving out of personal residence, going to a living facility, nobody wants to lose or uh, go out of their own personal residence, going to a nursing home or going to assisted living place. So that's another concern everybody has. Cognitive decline. When I say cognitive decline is, you forget. You keep on asking your spouse, did we eat lunch? What happened to my keys? Or same question you keep on asking five times. Uh, and it becomes a problem. Uh, giving up of your driving, that's another problem. I have 90 and 100 year old patients one lady came at 97, she says, Dr. Shah, uh, can you fill out this form? I need to go for my driver license renewal. <laughs> uh, I have about 10 patients, 12 patients who are, who are more than 100, and I can talk about the positivity, I'll talk about that, but other thing is that how strong they feel about their health is so important. One lady, she comes to see me after the visit, at the end, while she was leaving my office, she's 97 year old, she was leaving the office, and she says, can you give me a letter of excuse from the work today? I could not go to work. I said, you are 97, you're working? 
where are you working? She said, I'm working at CVS. Can you believe? Another 105-year-old gentleman I admitted at the hospital, he had fallen, he broke his hip, and I called the orthopedic doctor, I asked him that Mr. So-and-so needs to have hip surgery. He says, comes to me and says, Dr. Shah, he's 105. What is, how is he going to manage? Let him go to nursing home and spend, let him spend the rest of his life in the nursing home. Fortunately or unfortunately, this gentleman heard our conversation. We were talking just out of the door. He said, Dr. Shah, come here and call Dr. Moscow, the orthopedic, call him in. He says, listen, don't look at my age. You do surgery, I'll show you how I survive. He had a surgery next day. 10 days later, he was discharged from the hospital. So positivity, mind over body, very important. So, uh, and the uh, last thing on this one is uh, losing your family and your friends. So these are the most common uh, concerns people have. And I'll talk about that positivity, uh, how positivity helps. Uh, one lady, when she turned 100, the TV media people, the reporters, news media, they came to her house and asked her, so what's the fun of being 100? And this lady is still so witty, so smart, she looks at these reporters in his eyes and um, she pauses and then she says, you know what? She thought about it. She says, you know what? There is no peer pressure. <laughs> <laughs> so important things to take home today is that stay active, find a hobby. Let me take to the next one. Okay. So stay active, find a hobby which you can enjoy. Explore the outdoor park, mountaining, hiking, whatever you can enjoy. And... Uh, spending time with your with the people whom you love, family and friends, eat healthy diet, get regular checkups, take all medications as prescribed, smile and laugh more. Laughing, smiling prolongs your life in a way. With that, it secretes your dopamine, your serotonin, your endorphins, and you stay healthy. Meditation and yoga is so important. Use some positive thinking strategies. Add exercise to your daily routine. Aim for seven to eight hours of good night's sleep. Very important. And again, I would say be positive. Uh, and with that, I want to invite a gentleman whom I met just about six weeks ago, eight weeks ago, while I was in a vacation in Japan. And this young man, 81 young, year, young man, he was walking around, running around, uh, making us feel like, how much energy this young man has? And then when we asked him more, he says, I survived two cancers. And then he says, not only that, I had a heart problem, I had a bypass, I had a heart problem and it was treated. And now I'm enjoying my life. He travels all over the world. He's doing so many activities on his own. You would like to hear from him. He he's very inspirational. It would be very inspirational to hear from his own words rather than I talk about it, um, and I will invite Rajbai. Before Rajbai comes here, I want to tell one thing, that after Rajbai talks about three to four minutes, we have a wonderful dietitian, Raj, Rajan Bai, one second, a dietitian, Jigna, she's one of our own. She has been helping our Jain Center members and many patients at her work uh, about healthy diet and how to live a good life, and especially be being Jain, she can entertain and she can answer the questions about how to stay Jain, how to follow our Jain principles and do good dieting. So after Rajbha is done, I'll invite uh, Jigna to talk. After she's done, we'll talk about questions and answers. Rajan Bhai, bolo. Here, I'll come and give it to you. <laughs> Raj Bhai, you come home, have a dinner, and then... <laughs> Well, I don't need to say, I don't need to get permission. She's telling us, so please come on over. <laughs> After Jigna Ben's presentation. Yes, yes, yes. We can spend enough time. Don't worry about it. Raj Bhai, thank, thank you very, very much. much. Please. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> so thank you, Dr. Jayesh Rai, for giving me the opportunity to talk about my personal life and how I overcome and what I do now and I think he briefly mentioned, and also I agree with his presentation, the slide, but I agree 100% age, 
and that I think I following part of it, and it is uh, helping me where I am today. Um, like he mentioned that uh, my <coughs> I had a lot of health issue in, uh, in when I was young, but anyway the uh, the recent one in 1998 I uh, had a heart attack and apparently it turned out to be not my cholesterol, but I worked for the airport in the missile defense system and a lot of stress uh, when you work in the defense and uh, have to get the things done and it was a high stress job and that caused the plaque release and then you know they, I got a heart attack but uh, so I survived that and I continue work uh, at the Air Force and then in uh, 2005 I was 64 years old and uh, staying sick and uh, it was diagnosis that I got it called leukemia and the type called MDS, myelodysplastic syndrome. So that one would, at the time, there was no cure uh, and I couldn't qualify for the, on the, after bone marrow, the stem cell transplant. So with the God, faith in the God, I survived that and I'm still here today. Then 2016, I got another blood cancer called uh, non-Hodgkin's lymphoma uh, cell B and there, by the time we found out the, uh, you know, the time spent with the first phase of leukemia, but then found out that my cancer has spread to the five organs. So that way it went to the stage four and survival was like a six to 12 months. So I went to the city of Hope locally and got my seven chemo sessions. And now I'm cancer free after six years. So I'm glad it's over. Now, how do, how do I get there? That's the one I think we talk about in a, most of uh, the Dr. Jasper I mentioned of a positive thinking. That's the played a big important role in my life because you think uh, that, that I always think positive, you know, and, in, and the faith in our God, religion. So, so he just says he's going to take care of it. I don't worry about it now. I'm living almost a stress-free life. And um, then <coughs> I um, <coughs> actually that uh, positive thinking give me the internal strength and it's a strong will to live. That's what I uh, concept. And most importantly, you get a family support. That without that, you cannot live a good life. So the family support is most important in the life. And uh, now, my motto is to enjoy the life. What in, uh, today? Don't worry about tom uh, uh, tomorrow because it's not in our hand. God will take care of it. And so, I fortunately, um, I don't take any medications or anything. Um, it, that's my, except uh, Dr. Jesha mentioned, I've got a pre diabetes, so I take a metaphoric. But I don't have to take any other medication. and. Uh, during our, I get, <coughs> I now, as, I, as he mentioned, for the last 18 years since my 2005, I've been a lot of international travel. I've done a lot of called uh, uh, land tour, about uh, eight to 10, which is required, a lot of walking. And uh, <coughs> I, li I, I got a 23 foot motor home, I drive. I go to the beach camping, mountain driving, and uh, you know, so it doesn't stop me and say that I'm 81 and now I'm good. So you know, I, uh, fortunately, I've been able to do that. And um, I walk like a walking thing the um, Dr. J mentioned, that I walk to one, two, three miles per day in the street. Then on the step wise, if you have got a Fitbit or the, you know, the Apple Watch, that comes out anywhere from uh, 5,000 to 15,000 steps per day just a walking in that. And I keep myself very busy. I, n I don't find that I've got any free time. I mean, just the mind is working and that can keep the dementia out because, you know, I can think, I go on the computer work, you know, and so, and other thing is that uh, the grandchildren. That's another thing is going, you know, we have got a seven grandchildren, so that keeps us go going too. So they're always busy. I mean, I never found that 
I've got a little time to kill it. Then other thing, if, uh, mm. and I started doing uh, yoga, which is about a year ago, and uh, because of our faith in uh, our religion, you know, meditation you do at the night with the doing the arti and anything, you just sit down, you know. So that is making a big difference. And most importantly, which also Dr. Jay mentioned, I, have, I take about, uh, normally about eight hours sleep. I do not have any problem in sleeping. I can, I'm not at a single day I found that I got in the middle of the night and uh, I can't sleep or, you know, I can fall asleep um, around it and I sleep for about eight hours. I get up at 8.30. I used to get up at 4.30 when I worked for the Air Force for 26 years. So now I'm, I paid my dues so I don't get up before ever 8 or 8.30. I sleep nicely. And so that is helping me, the mind is working, you know, that's the most important thing also. I'm not going to take any time, but um, uh, just on my, uh, I'm trying to keep it short because of the, you know, time limit. So I hope I this can give the inspiration to the people that the life is not over. And it is just the beginning, you know, just, you know, enjoy it and don't worry about anything because the stress is a killer. So keep the stress out. And it's sometimes it's a hard. It's, we are human beings, but you know. So anything you can do to stress out, enjoy your life, and you know. Thank you very much. That's good. Yeah. No, I don't take insurance. Okay. I'm just free diabetes metformin. That's uh, the first medicine. Do you, do you buy travel insurance when you go to? Oh, yes, I do that just for the security. Just for the security. You know, you never know if you get sick. It's unpredictable. But let me tell you, he, he does buy it, but he's not using it. I, <laughs> <laughs> I'm not using it. It's just like a the security. We'll talk more about it. There, thank you. There, there are three, I say there are three things in this world. You want to keep it, but you don't want to use it. Anyone's, anyone wants to share what those three things Lawyer. are? Lawyer. Lawyer. Doctor. Doctor. Good, you are all smart people. You want to have a doctor, you want to have a lawyer, and you want to have insurance, but you don't want to use any of those three, okay? And as Rajbhai said, he's such an inspiration. You can see at 81, he doesn't look like he's 81, and this was a good inspiration, so that's why I thought positive thinking. Forget about yesterday, you, have, you don't have any control. Forget about tomorrow, you don't have any control. Yesterday is gone, tomorrow you don't have a control. Live today, what you can do, do the best. Don't worry about tomorrow and don't worry about yesterday. Now, um, I would ask uh, Jigna uh, to come here and talk about healthy diet. And uh, if uh, any question answer, we'll do it after she's done, okay? Thank you. So nice. Please, Jigna, thank you. And as I, as I said, she's very helpful to our Jain Center members. She's our Jain Center member for since she came to this country, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Yeah, I don't. Hi, everyone. Jai Jinendra. Um, I don't have the PowerPoint slides, but I think we are good. I have 10 minutes. Uh, I think I'll cover everything, which uh, most people want to know. We'll do some of the items which I wrote down is actually covered by Jaya Shankar. Or, oh, I can move. <laughs> Uh, I don't do this as often as Jay Shankar, but um, I'm an inpatient dietitian, so I work at Kaiser. I've been working since 16 years, um, so I have decent experience by now. <laughs> so um, healthy eating, uh, it's really important. It, I think it goes hand in hand with uh, good health and healthy aging. I think most important thing is in our diet, what I see the biggest problem is the variety of food. We have tons of food, but we get used to eating the same thing over and over. 
um, we, for example, if we do roti da barchak, a lot of people like certain dals only. So they'll eat tur dal or mug dal like over and over. So we wanna do different types of dal, different types of shak, different types of roti too. Um, if possible, it's good to incorporate more whole grains. So instead of just doing whole wheat flour, we can do oat ragi, oat, oat, oatni roti, or ragi flour, uh, uh, millets, brown rice, uh, bulgur. Uh, so those are different grains, which takes time to cook. So the biggest uh, complaint I get from people is, uh, you have to spend so much time on those things. But there are shortcuts. I never, I'm never in the kitchen more than half an hour, even making Indian food. Because there are shortcuts, and it requires a little bit of pre-planning. Uh, so, for example, if it is brown rice, which I usually cook brown rice, you just have to uh, put uh, put it in the just put it in the warm water, and just keep it for good half an hour or one hour, and it's ready to go. It's, it takes only that much time as white rice, but you just have to prep a little bit, just like how we would do lentils or beans. We would just put it in a warm water, right? So a night before or, or early morning, stuff like that. So we just have to plan a little bit to make it a little easy. Uh, variety of fruits and vegetables. So we all eat fruits and vegetables, but the ones which has the maximum nutrition is deeper and darker color fruits and vegetables. For example, among fruits, I would say blueberries, which is considered a super food right now, pomegranate, apples, mangoes, mango season chala chatyare, cherries, again, deeper, darker colored fruits. Now, same thing with vegetables. Uh, anything which can even stain your hand, those are better for you. For example, beets. So if you're a giant, if you don't choose to you eat that, that's okay. We have other alternatives. We could do spinach, we could do kale, purple cabbage instead of plain green cabbage. We could do chard, pumpkin, if you do eat pumpkin. Uh, different types of peppers, deeper, darker color, different peppers. Just not, don't stick to just one green pepper. And if pepper jiri was too, we can even eat kacha. It doesn't have to be always cooked. Uh, sweet potato, if you do eat eggplants, those things are, again, deeper, darker colored vegetables. Next thing, I'm gonna talk a little bit about beans and lentils. There is a huge importance to those things because if you do follow plant-based diet, then what are your protein sources? What are your fiber sources? So you have to look at those things. Now, the com biggest complaint I hear is beans and lentils, gas and that's the fact. So first of all, you have to boil them, heat, like keep it warm for a long time. Like you have to cook longer and you have to make sure that it's, it's uh, put in uh, warm water. It should be soaked well. So that reduces the gas formation, number one. Number two, eat during the day. Most people are a lot more active after lunch, but less active after dinner. So eat beans and lentils during the day. And number three, don't be shy. If you fart, you fart. It's okay. It's natural. It's not a big deal. So if, as long as it's not giving you discomfort, because we can work towards constipation and all those things too, as Jay Shankar mentioned. And I'll, I'll mention a little bit about that too. Uh, plenty of water, which Jay Shankar already covered. Uh, now, when we say fluids, we talk about, we talked about like about four of these bottles. This is 16 ounce bottle, about four of them. Now, I, I don't say only water because water is boring and water may not be enough for everybody, not everybody likes water either. So I'll give you some ideas. So tea, coffee, uh, smoothie, green juice, all that is considered water. But concentrated form is not very good. So fruit juices are not good because it has a lot of sugar, especially if you drink from the outside. Although apple juice, orange juice, that has too much sugar. So that's not go good. But if you take a small amount of that, and add it in a lot of water and dilute it, that's okay, because that flavors your water, but you're not getting too much sugar. You're getting just a tiny bit. So you could do that. You can do a natural way of uh, flavoring the water. You can add like cucumbers, mint, um, ginger, if you eat any of those, so you can even do that and have water accordingly. Now, water is restricted in certain disease, and I'm not gonna go into details of that, but if your doctor has said, not more than this many ounces of water, then you have to um, abide by that. But otherwise, 48 to 64 ounces of water per day. It also helps with the constipation. And second thing what helps, as uh, Uncle mentioned, is psyllium husk, isabgul, metamucil, those things help. But that 
puts everything together. It needs to be pushed out of the body. So don't keep eating more fiber unless you drink more water. Otherwise, you are more constipated, and that's where the gas problem also happens. So more fiber, more water. OK, and the, another advantage of fiber is um, it has a lot of prebiotics. A lot of people, are, this is the big thing right now in the, for the gut health, prebiotics, probiotics, all that stuff. So fiber has a natural prebiotics, so which actually increases the growth of good bacteria in your colon. So that helps with the gut health. Um, I would say like it's like a food for your good bacteria. Uh, next thing I want to spend a little bit of time about quality of protein. Protein is important, and we cannot deny that. 0.8 to 1 gram per kilogram protein we need. So on an average, for an Indian uh, structure, we need about 45 to 60 grams of protein. If you're female, a little less, male, a little more. But 45 to 60 on an average, grams. I did a little bit of my own research for a plant-based person who eats um, a plant-based diet. It, they were getting only 30 to 30 grams of protein. So we'll have to put a little bit more effort to get the protein. Now, we all know that protein is high in beans, lentils, nuts, seeds, nut butter, um, milk, cheese, yogurt. If you are vegan, you can use soy milk or any other milk which is fortified with calcium and protein. So you have to make sure that its fortification is done. Um, and nut butter is okay too. So those things you can have. Just to have to have some protein throughout the day. You can't have a one big meal with protein and no protein throughout the day. So you have to have, for example, I would say a snack could be hummus and some vegetables or um, a Greek yogurt if you do eat uh, milk products. Or it can be um, nuts, uh, just a handful of nuts. So a handful of nuts is okay for everyone, even if you have cholesterol. It's plant-based protein. It does not affect your cholesterol. So it's okay to have that. Um, if you are struggling with underweight, being very underweight, certain amount of weight is important. In fact, we tell our older patients to actually be a little bit overweight because one little episode of pneumonia can wash them out. So they lose 10 to 15 pounds in one big, big episode of stuff. So it's okay to be a little bit overweight. If you are struggling with being underweight, you can have Ensure, or Boost, those kind of drinks. They are lactose-free, and they are okay for health. Uh, last thing I want to mention is uh, supplements. There's a whole industry of supplements in this country. And trust me, just because I have a license called RD, registered dietitian, whatever I say, people take, whether it's proven or not. Uh, so we don't always have to do so many supplements. Uh, but we do, being a plant, being a, if you're a vegetarian, I would highly recommend one multivitamin. But multivitamin should be age appropriate and gender appropriate. There are specific ones for women, there are specific ones for men. And there are specific ones for certain age. Because after a certain age, we need certain nutrients in higher quantity. So we want to make sure that we take multivitamins based on that. Um, so that's one important thing. And secondly, when you do your annual checkup, make sure that your doctor checks all your other nutrients, like B12, iron, calcium, all those things. If you are low in any of those, then you will need additional supplement to bring those levels up. And trust me, it works you will see the change in your energy level and overall health. If you are low, then you have to take those extra ones. Um, last thing, I think I don't see our community following too many processed food and canned food items. They don't use that much, but limit those if you do use that. Uh, we do, as Uncle said, we do have meal services, which we rarely use, but if you are struggling with meals, there are a lot of these new services which actually gives you plant-based meals at your doorsteps. Mom's Meals is one of those company and Meals on Wheels. They never used to have plant-based, but now they have plant-based meals for everybody. Um, so that's pretty much it from my side. And Uncle did a great job with physical activities and I 100% agree with him. Uh, but one thing I wanted to add besides walking and yoga and stuff, uh, there are lots and lots of YouTube videos on chair exercises. 
look up that if you have physical constraints of walking or doing certain things. Uh, chair exercises are great. We can sit in the chair and follow the video exactly. It helps you with your upper body and lower body. And what you can do is you can do 30 minutes in the morning, 30 minutes in the evening. We are looking at 45 to 60 minutes of total physical activities. And it should be a dedicated time, not like, oh, to rasodama roj chalu chhu. Ito baddach kare cha. And like, that's all it is. That's it from my side. Thank you. Jigna, yeah. so, why, why don't you both of you stay in the stage only? Because questions could be to any of you. So, so and you have only about 10 minutes, right? Yeah, yeah. Jigna, thank you very much. She did a wonderful, wonderful job. Uh, so please give a big hand of applause to her. She's very experienced, and she has catered according to our needs. So I'm very happy, and thank you again. Thank you. And now we are opening Q&A. And um, just, okay, just so just by you one announcement. OK, raise this your hand. Program. For this questions. Program, this program is YouTube live right now. It's live on the YouTube Change Center YouTube. Thank okay, you. thank you. A question, anybody has a question? Then raise your hand. Okay. Uh, yeah. Rajan Dami has a question. I have a, two questions. One for Mr. Raj, uh, who I guess. Uh, you mentioned that you walk anywhere from um, uh, 5,000 feet to uh, 5,000 steps to 15,000 steps, you know, uh, daily. I have been uh, told, you know, nu numerous times that too much walking here. My name is Raj also. I am Raj too. <laughs> so I have been given a controversial you know, answer to that. Too much walking is not good for your knees. You know, I'm, you know, so I'm just going through a knee surgery or a knee replacement. And a lot of people have told me, because I used to walk six miles a day, every day, you know, and, and uh, I've been told, you did it too much, and that's what is, you're paying for it. But then I hear from you that, you know, the, uh, the f five to 15,000 steps is a good exercise for you. So uh, you have any in-between answer for that? Because, yeah, you know, I like okay. to walk quite a bit because, you know, I enjoy walking. You know. You're right, but I think most of the problem comes from running. I do not run. The osteoporosis or uh, osteopenia, the one which hurts your knees, and that is mostly comes from the call to running. And you, or even the brisk walking sometimes can do that. Okay. But I walk uh, uh, leisurely on the streets. You know, my street has got a little up and down, but you know, but uh, that yeah. I do it. And, I do not have, again, fortunately, I do not have any knee problem. Uh, I know I will get someday, but at this point, I can do it like a, yeah, uh, okay. Dr. Jay mentioned, that all the land tour I did, and land tour requires anywhere up to five miles or something, standing on your feet. You start early in the morning, seven till late in the evening. But I never felt that, okay, I'm so tired, I can't do anything, and I'm ready for the next day. Right. So it's fortunate, but I guess in, in my case it worked. Uh, I do not run, as I said, and I used to do brisk walking, but I cut, I cut it down, but I just, you know. Yeah, I I used to to Ra Rajan Bhai, I know you asked this question, Raj Bhai, but I'll just tell you uh, that not everybody has to walk as much as every other people okay, are doing. Right, okay. You have to customize according to your own needs. Some obese people, if they walk too much or run too much, they can hurt their hips and their knees. So even they can do in those situations, they can do stationary bicycle. Okay. But basic principle is let it wear out. Don't let it rust out. Okay, good point. Jignarban, I have a question for you. Sure. Uh, you mentioned about uh, uh, water. And I think it was an error on your part. You said you have to have eight glasses of water per week. I suppose you meant day. Per day, <laughs> sorry. Yeah. Okay, right. That was a good catch. At I least you were awake and listening yeah. to us. Good. <laughs> exactly. That was just Thank a catch. Thank you. <laughs> Next. Uh, uh, Jitan Bhai. Uh, Jigna, I have a question sure. for you. So, uh, can everyone hear Jitan Bhai or you need I think everybody can hear me, right? <laughs> yeah. yeah. I will not. Bag or different with your diet or first people you know like for you know nothing until 11 o'clock the 
No, you can follow that, and we can just, that's where the experts come in the picture, like when you meet the dietitians, we, we try to work with what works for you. We don't say, oh, this is how you should be doing. Yes, if you believe in intermittent fasting, which actually a lot of research have shown, so then we will work with you, okay, okay, fine, you can have the biggest meal of the day when you actually open the fast. In fact, you're supposed to open the fast with high protein. And then you can add a high protein snack in the middle, and then you have an early dinner. So we work with you. Yeah. Everything in moderation is fine. Ati sarvatra varjayeta. And what she says is like, eat, like, eat breakfast like a prince, eat lunch like a king, and eat dinner like a poor man. This is for you. Uh, this question, uh, sorry. <laughs> Jayesh, bhai. Sorry. <laughs> you, you mentioned in your presentation mental health. And I think our community doesn't accept that mental health um, part of it. Because I know that it is ignored. No, 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 I don't want to go to a psychiatrist, psychologist, something. But we have to accept we live in the United States and we are lonely sometimes. And the life here is very different than the life in India. So uh, what is your opinion about that? And I have experienced that. So You have a very good question. And it's a very Thank common you. question. My simple answer in one line is, you accept it or not, it is there. That simple answer. Now, what to do? Awareness, uh, awareness, awareness. We need to make people understand that mental illness or mental health is equally important as physical health is. And if you have good mental health, physical health would be also better. And sometimes, and as you mentioned that our community, not only our community, there are many other communities where they feel like we are iron man, we cannot have our mental problem. But we are all human beings and we do go through this. We have to accept it. We have to get treated. You don't have to have a medication for that. You can have therapy, psychotherapy, uh, and that can help us also. So, but whether you accept it or not, it's there, it's not going to go away. Thank you. Beans, lentils, fruits, vegetables, nuts, seeds. These are your main plant-based fiber. Rajan Bhai. I'm the up one Rajan Bhai. Or Kesan Bhai, Rajan Bhai and the mic up then. You mentioned about nuts. Yes. Now, you know, there are various kinds of nuts, starting with um, uh, almonds, uh, walnuts, mm -hmm. um, um, cashews, mm -hmm. pistachios, and uh, all the others, you know. Mm -hmm. Of the four I just mentioned, which combination of those you recommend? Because I eat every day quite a bit of walnuts mm -hmm. and um, uh, almonds mm -hmm. and uh, s sometimes um, um, cashews yeah. and, and some raisins mm -hmm. or craisins is the one. Mm -hmm. So is that a good combination? Because walnuts, I, I believe, is just like a, it's the shape of a brain. So hopefully my brain. <laughs> yeah, and that theory, actually theory is right. Uh, walnuts and almonds are the best top two. Walnuts and almonds, but she comes pecans, then cashews and pistachio and peanuts. So these are your yeah. You can basically every nut has its own potential. It has protein, it has antioxidants, but some has higher than the others. So that's what the this order comes in. Mm -hmm. Almond and walnuts both. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they have omegas. Jesh bhai, you have a lot of patients who are 90 years old. There are even some people 100 years old. Japan as a country has a lot of 100 year old people. So what is the reason for their success of life and lengthy, happy life, whatever they are living? Healthy lifestyle. And maybe they may have better genes, but healthy lifestyle is very, they're very disciplined. Until now, I was telling people what I was reading or I was seeing on TV. Two months ago, I experienced by myself. I saw it by myself. Very, ex 
disciplined community, very good at work habits, exercise habits, diet habits, and that's one. But two is certain products like red meat or uh, fatty food is not as common as much as what we see here. It's not as much as over there. So discipline in the life, right diet, right exercise habits, working habits does make a big difference. Thank you. Any other question? If not, looks like we are all smart now. Yeah. We all understand everything about health. So <laughs> one more question here. Uh, ben, I'm not Thank you. Very well presentation. Thank you, both of you. Thank you. Uh, I, I need to ask any one of you, what we need at senior age besides all the multi-factor is good medical advice. And there are so many on internet uh, things that they abound, sites, and we don't know which is, most of the public doesn't know. That's one thing. Secondly, in Kaiser's, HMOs like Kaiser, it's uh, geriatrician services are not available. Dietitian services are not as readily available. How do we deal with that? She's the right person to answer about diet. And right. <laughs> no, dietitian services are available. We do virtual as well as one-on-one. -on -one. And do we need a referral? You need referral, yes. And that's how HMO works. For everything you need referral. We are subspecialty too, so we need referrals What too. about geriatrician? Geriatricians, there are. There, there are p uh, doctors who specifically work with certain age group. And sometimes you may not have specific geriatrician in that field, but they only work with, like for example, Orange County, I work with 80 and above. I'm not kidding. Pretty much. So it depends on the population of that area. I'll so, come to yeah. you next year. <laughs> only thing you need to have a referral even to sneeze or to get up, sit, stand up or sit down. Okay, Jim? <laughs> thank you. Thank, thank, thank you, both of you. Uh, our appreciation to you. Oh, thank you so much. Our appreciation to so you. Nice. And, and Big round, big round of applause for uh, oh, this uh, wonderful people. They, they give us their services at no charge and uh, they really come and help us. So thank you, both, thank both of you. I want to correct uh, our kissing by uh, the way you are saying no charge. I should thank, I should myself and Jigna, mm -hmm. we thank you for giving us the opportunity to talk in front of you. And you, you did sit, uh, sit here, you did sit down here for more than an hour, listen to us without any <laughs> uproar or any uproar. So thank you very much. Thank we appreciate so much. that. Thank you. 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 And if you want this yeah. paperwork, I can give yeah. you this. Otherwise, you can just email to me, and I'll put it on our website. You can do that. <laughs> Copy of this? No. <laughs> okay. Thank, thank you very much. Um, my boss is telling me something. Let thank, me thank listen. You. What did you say? Thank you. Okay. So. Oh, one thing. I, see, that's why she's with me all the time. To, I am also getting that area. She says it's on YouTube. Everybody can have it now. You don't need anything. It's on YouTube. Okay. <laughs> see, see, that's why she's my better half. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And, and one more thing, Jayesh Bhai, just stand there for five seconds. Jayesh Bhai just got the important award from the Jaina as an adult Jain uh, uh, for doing so much for the community. Jaina has a 50,000 Jains, and he has been selected to get the adult award from Jaina. So that's a big congratulation to Jayesh Bhai. 150,000, yeah, 50,000 family, 150,000 Jains, yes. That reminds me, let me answer your question from Jack. What we have done at Jaina level, we have, we have created a, uh, one committee, telehealth committee. So anyone in this country, not in this country, anywhere in the world, they need any help or guidance on medicine, medical help, uh, the telehealth committee members will be available for you to help you, guide you, answer your questions. It's called telehealth committee free of charge to uh, anyone in this country. I'm part of that committee, so I just want to let you know. Thank you very much. Thank you, Jess, bye. Okay.
I want to tell you again, this uh, program is organized by Jain Center Senior Association. And we want to organize a lot more programs and a lot more fun programs, uh, and also at an economical cost. So I've been trying to also raise some donation and sponsorship money for our organization. I would have uh, loved to stay over here longer, enjoy Subhas Bhai singing, and have dinner with you. But unfortunately, I, no, fortunately, yeah, sorry, not. I have to go to attend a wedding, so I'm leaving. Thank you very much. Yes. In spite of his uh, uh, appointment for wedding, he decided to come and uh, uh, take care of us today. Thank you. So, so to, to do that, I, I approached uh, uh, Manu Bhai and Rika Ben, and I said, yeah, can you give us uh, some money so we can do some nicer and better programs and, and longer term regularly programs? So this is the challenge he has given me. He said, I, I will match dollar for dollar that you raise from uh, other people up to $5,000. So you don't have to announce your name or, 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 in loud if you, unless you want to. But if any of you have a desire to help out, uh, any amount is welcome. Uh, but uh, uh, Manu Bhai and Rika Ben has agreed to give us up to $5,000, and they'll match us for dollar for dollar. And then if that happens, we'll have $10,000. And with that, we'll be able to do a lot more programs at a more economical cost on a more frequent basis. So, so think about it. And if you have a desire to help out, then uh, do contact any of our committee members about it. Thank you. Uh, next up, so we are ready for a nice fun of singing and dancing and, and fun, fun time. So, so with, with that, I'm going to have two, of, two singers who are going to be coming here. Uh, Kavita Deepak uh, is, a, is, a, is a wonderful singer. I have known her for many, many years, and she's going to be one of the singers. And Subhash Bhai Tolia is our, our well-known uh, singer. Subhash Bhai Tolia knows over 3,000 songs by heart and he can perform for four hours continuously. That's how talented he is. So we are going to about 75 minutes of musical program. Then we're going to break for dinner. And after dinner again, we'll continue for another 60 minutes. So with that, I'm going to get off from here, and I'm going to turn it over to them. Thank you. Uh, excuse me, they, they, they want to do some setup, so they need about five, seven minutes. If you want to go to the bathroom, keep, have a cup of tea, whatever. So come back in five to seven minutes. Thank you.
Hello? Everyone, please get seated. We are starting the program. Yeah, Everyone, please sit down. Uh, we are going to start the program right now. Shubhas Bhai, start, start. Let's, let's not waste any time. Those who are there, they, they will start coming when they hear singing. 